As Bryce Young prepares to face C.J. Stroud, you should know that in football circles, nobody's really worried about Bryce Young being a bust. And I'm not talking about Panthers fans overreacting on social media or the fantasy football community that might have Bryce on their fantasy team and they're upset he's not setting the world on fire. I'm talking about people whose livelihood is football. Those people are not concerned with Bryce right now. And that includes the Carolina Panthers. Nor should they be concerned because, after all, they traded up a lot to get this guy and he hasn't really done anything egregious just yet to make you think he's not going to be that dude for you. The real reason why there is some angst around Bryce Young and him potentially being a franchise guy is how good C.J. Stroud has looked early on and Carolina had the opportunity to pick him. They went through the process. Some suggested that maybe Frank Reich actually wanted C.J. Stroud all along, but David Tepper didn't let him take him. That's not what happened. That's what I've been told all along, not just since this has cropped up with C.J. Stroud getting off to a good start well before it would be convenient to have that opinion. That was being expressed. And here was Frank Reich, I think, handling that subject very well yesterday. We got the guy we wanted to get. Couldn't be happier about that in every way. Um, and, and I would say this. I'm happy for CJ. You know, he's, he's had six good games. Um, and I have no doubt he'll have many more good games. Um, but I know this. When it comes to evaluating quarterbacks or any position, it's years, not weeks. You know, you can't put a label on a guy after six weeks or, um, or even a year. My eyes and our eyes were on Bryce Young and um, from start to finish. Uh, you look at the film, to, uh, you talk to the man, you get a sense for the leader, um, the player, and what he is and what he can be and how he fits to what we want to do and the vision that we have as an offense, as a team, and as an organization. We got the, right, we got the guy for us. If you dig into his tape, it's obvious that he's not playing poorly. Bryce is not playing poorly right now. To be clear, he's made mistakes, even big mistakes. The interception in Detroit that wasn't because of the, the bad play call, a slip screen to Ian Thomas that Aiden Hutchinson had a freak play on, the one that was down the left sideline, that wasn't good. That's Bryce adjusting to the speed. Same thing for the Jesse Bates mistake in the first game where Bates, pun intended, baited him into an interception. That's a vet, a very good one. A hashtag pro Deke or Deke Pro making a play on Bryce. You had the two fumbles, one of which I believe cost Carolina that game against Minnesota. So some have been consequential, but the pros have outweighed the cons. None of it's what's been more glaring when you rewatch these games and you try to break it down and look at it critically and holistically. What's more glaring is the lack of protection and the lack of separation often by the wide receivers. Adam Thielen, he's got off to a good start. Who else receiving has gotten off to a good start? Nobody else. There are at least 10 plays a game where you look at it and say, Bryce didn't have a shot because the protect there or... supposed to be going out Freeze the video, look around, and ask yourself the question, where should this ball go? Who the heck's open? Nobody? Well, darn. Take sacks or throw the ball in the area where maybe your receiver can play, but certainly the defender can't not. If you dig into the tape, it's pretty obvious he's not playing poorly. But don't just take that from me. Here's C.J. Stroud saying as much. I don't, I don't honestly, and personally, watching the film and watching every game of his, I don't think he's he in, in any way, aspect, or form, he's playing bad. Um, uh, that's what people think if you're not winning or, like, um, you have a turnover here and there. Uh, Bryce is playing some really good football. Um, so I just don't think people watch in depth. Like, if you're a quarterback, you know. Um, so I think he's playing really well. DJ Stroud grew up with Bryce Young in Southern California. Now, with all of that said, you do need to win. And if Carolina loses Sunday, the critics are going to get a lot louder. If you think it's loud right now, let Bryce Young off a bye lose at home to C.J. Stroud head-to-head. 
let that happen and see how much louder the critics get. Actually, I'll go a step further. Let the Panthers lose the next two games. If the Panthers lose in a head-to-head between Bryce and CJ and the games in Charlotte, and then Frank Reich loses against the team that fired him a year ago, also in Charlotte, while they have their backup quarterback in Gardner Minshew, that's when the conversation turns into, will Carolina win a game this year? That's when the conversation turns into, is Frank Reich about to get the Nate Hackett treatment or the Urban Meyer treatment? That's where that conversation goes. But Carolina has a good shot at winning this week. And at some point, you do need to start winning. And we're, I think we're arriving at that point for Bryce in his rookie year. But in football circles, as you kind of heard from DJ Stroud right there, nobody's really that concerned about Bryce being a bust or Bryce not performing well. 